Welcome as we gather in worship today. We gather to rejoice, to celebrate, and to give thanks in the name of Jesus. And so we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading is Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the ends of the heaven and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. this time we confess our sins together and hear those words of forgiveness and absolution. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. 
But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right. And by your merciful guidance, help us to do them through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, beginning in chapter 21. Jesus says, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, He will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, They realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, we continue by professing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of lights, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. continuing our sermon series on Paul's letter to the Colossians today and we do so by looking at Colossians chapter 4 verses 2 through 6. Let me share with you what it has to say picking up in verse 2. Devote yourselves to prayer keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. At the same time pray for us as well that God will open to us a door for the word that we may declare the mystery of Christ for which I am in prison so that I may reveal it clearly as I should. Conduct yourselves wisely toward outsiders, making the most of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, today as we draw near to the end of Paul's letter to the Colossians, I ask your blessing upon us. I pray that you would open these words, that they would speak to us, that they would cause us to grow in faith, and I pray that you'd use me to proclaim them clearly. Lord, I ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. I can't help but appreciate some of the questions the, the Colossians must have struggled with, uh, especially since they're at this very early time in, in their founding. I mean, some of the questions would have been things about uh, Jesus' identity, about grace, about forgiveness about how to live together as a community of believers. But I think one of the biggest questions that would have been on their mind is the question of what's next. What comes next? What should I do, they must have asked, now that I am a follower of Jesus? Well, Paul answers this question in our reading today. 
He does so by revealing to the Colossians, and to us too for that matter, that God calls us to be active in the mission of the church. So we are called to be active by God in the mission of the church. And Paul then goes on to share how exactly God calls us to be active in the mission of the church. So today what we're going to do is look at how we're called to be active in God's mission. As we do so, the first way God calls us to be active in the mission of the church is to pray continually. Paul says in his letter, pray continually. Verse 2 from our reading says it this way. Continue on in prayer, keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. As I was driving the other day, it struck me that there are a lot of rules of the road. There are signs that tell us when to stop. There are others that tell us how fast we can go. There are also signs that tell us things like yield, which is really neither stopping nor going, but a little bit of both. And then there are lights that turn green to tell us we can go, and lights that turn red to tell us when we need to stop. And of course, there are the lights that turn yellow, which remind us to speed up to avoid having to stop for the red one. I might be a little hazy on that yellow one. I don't know if you know it or not, but there are cars now that have sensors built into them that can actually read the signs for you. And so they read the signs, the street signs, and they will give you a warning and a reminder of the speed limit or an approaching stop sign. With all of these rules and technology to help us beside, you might think that every driver would gladly and willingly follow them. And you would, of course, be wrong. More than a few of us see traffic signs and lights and all of these things as sort of a suggestion rather than a requirement. Back to our reading, verse 2. The word continue from verse 2 is what is known as an imperative, which is like a command word. It means that Paul is saying that, well, this is necessary and it's non-negotiable. It's Paul's way of saying, as a follower of Jesus, it's important to do this. The idea of continuing on in prayer means that prayer is meant to be a continuous, ongoing conversation with God. Now listen to what Paul goes on to say and what he wants them specifically to pray for. Verse 3, it says, At the same time, pray also for us. And Paul asks them to pray for himself and his co-workers. And the prayer request is very specific. Paul asked them to pray in this way, verse 3 again, that God will open a door for us for the word so that we may speak of the mystery of Christ, which is why I am in chains. So Paul's praying for a door to be opened so that he would be able to speak of the mystery of Christ. In other words, he wanted the opportunity to be able to share the message of Jesus with others again. This call to pray continually was certainly meant for the Colossians, but it's meant for us too. As followers of Jesus, prayer is a key way we connect with one another, especially uh, as we are a bit divided as a congregation in terms of some watching services online and some worshiping in, in person and some watching from out of state. It's a way we remain in, in fellowship and connected with each other and active in the mission of the church. A second way 
God calls us to be active in the mission of the church is to walk wisely. He calls us to walk wisely. Paul says it this way in verse 5. He says, walk in wisdom. Now the idea of walking here again is continuous. It's this ongoing idea. So you could also say it's something like this. Be walking in wisdom. Now at one time I was tuning around to the various sports channels. And I don't know if you've ever seen it or not, but there's such a thing as race walking. Race walking. And it, it seems odd the first time you see it, but it really is literally a thing. They do it in the Olympics and all of that. And it's surprising how fast individuals can walk when they're doing it in a race format. Case in point, a British Olympian, his name is Tom Bosworth, race walked a mile in five minutes and 31 seconds. As he did so, he knocked nearly six seconds off the previous world record in the process. And I thought about the reality that when he does it, he walks with a, a purpose. There's a, there's a purpose to what he's doing. When Paul says walk in wisdom, he's reminding us that being a follower of Jesus means, well, it means walking with a purpose. And Paul then goes on to tell us the direction we should be going when we walk in wisdom. He says this, toward those who are outside, making the most of every opportunity. Now Paul says this because he wants followers of Jesus to see every interaction as an opportunity to share the joy of forgiveness with others. And so because of this, he encourages us in verse 6 to let your words always be with grace, seasoned with salt, so that you will know how you should answer each person. You know, as I read those words, I especially like this idea of being seasoned with salt. And it made me think about spicy food, so I just put out the question there. I'm wondering if you like spicy food or not. For those of you who do, there is a website, it's called Pepperhead. And it's dedicated to the hottest peppers in the world. Topping its list of the 10 hottest peppers in the world is the Carolina Reaper, it's called. Well, it is said to be 200 times hotter than a jalapeno pepper. I did not try to try it out to, to prove this or not. I will take their word on it. Um, but um, I like spicy food, but not quite that spicy. And let's just leave it at that. But I do like flavorful. For me, there's nothing worse than bland and tasteless. And maybe that's why we imagine that so many things taste like like chicken, because what we're really talking about is that that kind of chicken you get uh, maybe at a party or, or from a caterer or something that just almost tastes like rubber and really is tasteless. It's the spice that brings it to life and makes it stand out. In Paul's world, salt was regularly used to make food taste better. Maybe this is why he encourages us to let our words be with grace and let them be seasoned with salt. As I was thinking about salt, I was reminded of the fact that it's not only flavorful, and it not only brings taste, but it has power as well. Anyone who has ever lived in the north and in a colder climate where there's snow and ice, not like Florida, but where you've lived somewhere where there's those things and they use salt on winter sidewalks and streets, then you know that salt has the power to melt ice. As I think about that power, I realize it's so much more amazing that God can and does season our words with power, giving us the right words at just the right time to share the joy of Jesus with others. 
during my ministry, I've had some incredible opportunities to visit various people in a whole variety of settings. But in particular, I've visited more than a few people in hospitals and assisted living facilities and prisons and, and in hospice facilities. But when I first began to do this, I struggled with the sense that I wouldn't have the right words to share. Thankfully, I quickly realized that it wasn't up to me. It was up to God to work through me. And so after coming to this revelation, I began to pray immediately before visiting anyone. Before every visit, I would just simply stop and, and say a prayer. And I specifically would pray that God would give me the words that, well, that God would make my words salty and help me to say just the right thing at just the right time. And I think that was, that's what Paul is saying here. That God provides you with the right words to share your faith at just the right time too. May the Lord make your words salty as you share the cross of Jesus. Let's pray. Almighty, gracious, eternal God, today we think about the mission of the church. We think about your call, Lord. We think about how you call us to do things like walk wisely as your people and to be about prayer as your faithful community. But we're reminded, Lord, that it's you at work. It's not, it's not us building your kingdom, but it's your kingdom built in your way at your time, and you incorporate us to do that. And so strengthen us in this news, Lord, as we, as we go in your name. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, you call us to work for peace and justice in your vineyard. Refresh the church with your life that we may bear fruit through work and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the abundant harvest of the earth. Bless and care for those whose hands bring the fruits of the earth to the tables of all hunger. 
May we be inspired by your servants who cared deeply for your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Curb the impulses of greed and pride that lead us to take advantage of others. Grant that world leaders seek the fruit of the kingdom for the good and welfare of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain all who suffer with the promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We call to mind those who are struggling today, especially Sandy and Tom, who have both tested positive for COVID-19. And especially Tom, as he prepares for cancer surgery as well. Lord, for all of those who have tested positive for COVID-19, who have battled and are battling with it, and those who care for those affected by COVID-19, including Linda, as she struggles with the end-of-life care she provides. Lord, we lift up into your care Emerita Martinez, who is in the hospital with heart trouble. We pray for recovery and healing. And all of those, Lord, who are hospitalized, we pray for your hand to move, Lord, for you to provide comfort, peace, and recovery. We thank you for those that have recovered, including Gary Hazlett. Lord, that there is a successful surgery, and we pray for a complete recovery. Lord, for those diagnosed with cancer and other, other, other diagnoses, including Anne Suita, as she has been diagnosed with MDS. We pray for successful treatment and recovery. For those who hurt, including Sherry Mink, she recovers from neck and back injuries from an auto accident. And Lord, for Bill Mink, who is suffering from a serious bacterial lung infection. We pray for comfort there and Lord, to our healing time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all managers in our community and for all who seek employment. Give hope and future to those who lack meaningful work, those who have been marginalized or abused in the workspace, and those who desire new opportunities, including Fatima Rodriguez. Lord, as our country opens up, as our roadways open up, as states move into different phases, we pray for all of those who travel, including Lloyd Barge, as he goes to assist in caring for his daughter. And Lord, we pray for protection and safe delivery of her twins. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Leave to your God to order and 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Depart in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.